Hello everyone. Uh, this is lecture number five of your unit two quantum statistics, uh, BCU and second semester MSc physics. So the next topic that we have is conduction electrons and metals. So uh, uh, if you can remember, we have done a little bit about this in electronics during the first uh, semester. So uh, what we have to do is uh, first we have to uh, see why FD statistics is used for uh, analyzing the conduction electrons and metals. So initially we considered that uh, when we consider uh, conduction electrons and metals we think that uh, we assume that there is no mutual interactions. But uh, at, at a certain point of time uh, we see that the number of uh, conduction electrons in metals is so huge it's like a sea of electrons so it's so huge that uh, we have to treat it with uh, fermi dirac statistics so uh, as we have discussed uh, during in our classes uh, about the number of electrons uh, we have got the Fermi Dirac distribution and we have uh, derived that the number of electrons in a particular state for FD uh, Fermi Dirac statistics is 1 by uh, E raised to beta ES minus mu plus 1. So this beta is nothing but 1 by KT and mu is given by minus alpha by beta. So beta is 1 by KT so is equal to minus KT into alpha. This quantity mu, this is called the, uh, is also called as a Fermi energy uh, of the system. But also uh, we learned it as the chemical potential uh, when we were deriving the Fermi Dirac, uh, Fermi Dirac statistics. So now uh, for this uh, we have to analyze uh, what is this Fermi function and how does it vary with temperature. So if you take the Fermi function, uh, so you can write as uh, 1 by e raised to beta e s minus mu plus 1. So this is called as a Fermi function. So uh, I am just going to replace this mu by e f just to say, show that this is uh, the Fermi energy e f. Okay, And what does it actually give you? It gives the percentage of states that are occupied at a given energy. So, for example, if I have 5 states for a given energy, uh, if I have 5 states for a given energy, that means density of states which I am representing by G of E is given by 5. So, at a particular energy, I have uh, density of states is equal to 5. And if I have the Fermi function as 0.2 or 20 percentage, that means one fifth of it is occupied. That means only one. So if I have five states, if 20 percentage of that is occupied, so I have one electron sitting in uh, this. So um, and if I have uh, Fermi, if I have density of states as uh, 10 at a particular energy E1, and if I have my Fermi function at 0 0.1 or 10 percentage, then I have only one electron sitting in uh, out of all the 10 states. So here you have an idea about what is the density of states and also what is Fermi function. That it gives the percentage of states that are occupied at a given energy. So at a given energy E1, out of all these states only uh, 0.1 or 10 percentage of uh, this whole number of uh, states are occupied. So that gives you the idea about for what Fermi function is. Now, uh, okay, so you have this as a Fermi function. Now, if I plot it, Fermi function with respect to energy, this energy of the state E, or before we noted as uh, denoted noted it as E S. So, uh, at for a particular state S. So, uh, if I have, if I am plotting this uh, Fermi function as a function of this energy E. Now, if I assume that uh, a temperature of three hundred degree Kelvin. And then if you um, if you multiply uh, value of uh, Boltzmann constant K into temperature uh, you will get some 26 million electron volts and if uh, if we can analyze uh, two conditions two cases that is the first case is when E is this E is less than EF much far far less than EF then this function 1 by it will become some negative number minus EF by KT. So if I just uh, put 
uh, these values so for example in the case of a semiconductor so if i put uh, ef uh, is equal to 0 0.5 by 0 0.026 so you get some value which is uh, way very very less value e e this ef by kt will approximately be equal to 0 so when e so if this e raised to this value this is 0 then uh, you will get uh, e when e is far far less than ef then this f of e or your this this is equal to f of e this f uh, uh, so then this f of e will be equal to 1 so when uh, energy e is far far less than ef then your f of e will be approximately equal to 1 because this it will become e raised to almost 0 so uh, then uh, you have your f of e is equal to approximately equal to 1 now next case is when e is equal to ef so in this function if you put or here if you put e is equal to ef then what will you get e raised to uh, 1 plus uh, 1 by 1 plus 1 or it will be equal to half so that I am plotting it as half here similarly when you put E is far far greater than EF so then uh, this here it will be E is far far greater than EF that means it will be 1 divided by some huge number so that will approximately be equal to 0 so then your function falls down like this so this e becomes approximately equal to 0 okay so that is in the case when the temperature is 300 kelvin so now let's uh, what happens when we change the temperature so let's take the condition when t is equal to 0 so then uh, this function uh, just instead of k, k into t t is 0 then 1 by 1 plus e raised to e minus ef by 0 so that is uh, what so when t is equal to 0 uh, for the first case let's say that e is uh, for case number 1 that is e is far far less than ef then 1 by 1 plus e raised to my some negative number divided by 0 so some e raised to negative number divided by 0 it will be e raised to minus infinity so that will be uh, 0 so 1 by 1 plus 0 you will get as 1 so for t is equal to 0 and energy is less than EF then your Fermi function it will be equal to 1 okay so that is 1 here and now for T is equal to uh, at 0 Kelvin when E is far far greater than EF then if when you substitute 1 by uh, 1 plus E raised to it will be some positive number positive number divided by 0 so and it will become plus infinity so plus in e raised to plus infinity uh, plus 1 it is still infinity so 1 by infinity that will give you 0 so then there is a, a t is equal to because the temperature is 0 there is a sudden fall in the uh, Fermi function so this is your Fermi function yeah. so uh, because temperature is 0 uh, it does not go smoothly like that but it, there is a sudden fall uh, from uh, 1 to 0 so uh, when you see that this is at temperature t is equal to 0 and as you increase the temperature the uh, curve actually smooth smoothens out but it always passes through at e is equal to ef it becomes half so it always passes through this value of half and this is your fermi function ef so uh, one thing that you have to note is that uh, even when temperature is zero at even at temperature that is zero kelvin or all, all there is some certain energy ef possessed by the electrons how is that because it is due to the pauli's exclusion principle pauli's exclusion principle says that you have uh, you can there can only be one uh, uh, fermion it can occupy only one state so even though all the uh, electrons are uh, having lowest energy but they have only one electron can fill up the lowest so the next electron has to go to the next lowest like that even it is a temperature is equal to zero degree kelvin but there is a certain we have to fill up all the electrons at certain energy level and this energy level is ef so even though temperature is low 
and uh, um, the lowest temperature but still the electrons has to occupy a certain state until uh, they reach EF so that is why even though at 0 degree Kelvin they occupy certain energy they have certain energy that is EF so this is about uh, the Fermi function so I will uh, continue with this topic in the next lecture and this much for this lecture